Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another Astro Exploring video. Today I am going to be showing you how to stack mono images using Deep Sky Stacker and then merge those individual channels into one RGB channel in Adobe Photoshop. So I've had the pleasure of stacking some mono images for um, the first time and I hadn't realized that the process is quite different to using a DSLR or a color CMOS camera. So let's get right into it. I assume that you're already vaguely familiar with Deep Sky Stacker and calibration frames and all things like that. So I won't go into a huge amount of detail on this video. I do have another Deep Sky Stacker video where I explain the whole process end to end. So if you want to learn more about calibration frames, things like that, then I will link that video in the description down below. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into the raw fits settings on the left hand side here and go over to fits and we just want to untick this box seeing as we are using a, a mono camera we don't need to have that box ticked so the next thing that you want to do is load your images into deep sky stacker you could do that one of two ways you could either go up to the top left and click on open picture files or if you happen to have the files open already, I find that it's just easier to select the ones you want and just drag and drop them over. And these are light frames that we are stacking. So the second difference to note, the first difference being the setting that we just changed with the tick box. The second difference to note when stacking mono images is that we need to stack each filter separately. So. You can do that in Deep Sky Stacker by using groups down at the bottom here. So I've just added four hydrogen alpha images, and this data is from Telescope Live, which I'm trialing at the minute, and they are 10 minute exposures. And the I've already stacked these images before and the data is absolutely phenomenal. So I've got my hydrogen alpha images in the main group, and then I'm going to add the S2 and O3 images, but I'm going to do that in different groups. So I now need to select group one, back to my images, select the four S2 files, drag them in, the light frames again, group two for the O3 images. And I have stacked these already, but I deleted all the information off my laptop to make it a bit more authentic for this video. So all of the information that you would get from registering them, um, I haven't done so that you can see that process. So now that we've got all of our light images into Deep Sky Stacker, I'm not gonna add any calibration frames or, or anything for this process because they're already pre-calibrated from Telescope Live. So I don't really need to do that anyway, but just for making this process a bit quicker, Make sure that all of the images are checked. You can do that by just selecting check all and then click register checked pictures. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is if you've got stack after registering ticked, you're gonna to wanna to untick that because if you immediately stack after registering all your images, then you're gonna run into problems where you'll end up with the images probably not completely aligned. And so we don't want to do that in this case. So untick that, then go onto the advanced tab. And it's always a good idea to compute the number of detected stars. I find that on some of these images, I have to take it down quite low. As you can see, it's on 3% from my last stack. Um, so I'll just hit that button now and see where we are with these. Okay, I can see that I need to bump that way up because that's way too many stars and that'll take forever to <laughs> register and stack. So I'm going to bump that up back up to 20%, which is the uh, DSS default. 260, that's perfectly fine. So I'm now going to register all of these pictures and rather than make you sit there and watch all of them get registered by the magic of video editing, you will see me again once all of these images have registered. Okay, so all the images have now registered and what we want to note from here is that when Deep Sky Stacker registers the images, 
not only is it counting the stars and things like that, but it gives each image a score. So what I want to look for across all of our groups is the image that's got the highest score because that's the highest quality image that we have. So I've got one there, 1970, that's the best. So, all right, we've got one here in the hydrogen alpha uh, group, which is over 2000. So that is our best quality image that we've got. Now, like I said earlier, what will happen if you just try and stack all of these images together, you will end up with an image, a final image that's not quite aligned, which means that you'll end up with double stars and things like that, and obviously you don't want that. So what is best to do is to use a reference frame from one of the groups, hence looking for the best possible image, and then doing the stacks from each channel separately, and then aligning the channels in Photoshop afterwards. And you'll see why that, that that's better later. So we want to right click on the image that we've selected to use as our reference frame. And we want to click on use as reference frame. You can see that's now added an asterisk next to it. And then what we want to do is we want to uncheck all of the images because that will uncheck all of the images across all of the groups, which is what we want. And then we want to stack each channel individually. So now I want to stack these four images. So I'm only stacking the hydrogen alpha images. Because they're already registered, I can just click on stack checked pictures. If you had um, darks in here and things like that, then it would um, register them in there as well. And then we just want to hit OK to stack those images. And while that's stacking, it's very important to change the file name, I find, because Deep Sky Stacker by default will just call a stacked image, the stack TIFF file that you get out as autosave. And the problem with that is that you want to know when you're merging the channels later, which um, autosave was which file. So rather than having autosave and then autosave one and two, I think it's a good idea to call it H alpha S2 and O3 or something like that because then you know which filter needs to go into which channel in Photoshop or whatever um, post-processing software you use. So that has stacked. To get back to the original screen without this stacked file, I don't know if there's a better way to do it, but I just find if you just click on open picture files and then click cancel, it takes you back to that screen. There might be a better way to do that, I'm not sure. And so now I want to uncheck all of those images. And as I said, it's a good idea to just go in here. So these are the three images that I've stacked previously. So the one that I've stacked now is just called autosave. So I would suggest going in there and giving that a name. So you can see I called mine H alpha. The other way that you can do that is to go into settings, stacking settings, and then output and you can select this button here in the output file name and you can actually give it a proper name, but I just find it easier to um, just change the file name after it's stacked. So now that we've unchecked those, you can see that we've still got our reference frame here and now we want to stack the S2 and O3 layers, but as you've already seen that happen, I won't make you sit through that process again. So when you next see me, we will have stacked all the images and we'll be going into Photoshop. Okay, so now we've got our three stacked images in Photoshop. You can see I've got H alpha, O3, and S2. And I loaded them into Photoshop. It's really easy. You can either select all the images uh, that you want and just drag and drop them into Photoshop, or just go up to File, Open, and then you can open the files from there. So we've got three grayscale images in Photoshop. You can see H alpha is by far the strongest signal on this target, which is the uh, Lagoon and Triffid Nebulae. And what we want to do now is we want to merge these channels together. And because we've used a reference frame, all of these images will be, well, sorry, these three stacked images will be aligned with each other. So there won't be any messing around that we have to do with making all of the stars line up or anything like that. And the way to do that is to go into the channels menu here on the right hand side. And if you don't have that loaded in Photoshop, the way to get that up is to click on window and then channels. And that will load it up on the bottom right just here. And you can drag and drop that to wherever you want on your screen. 
And then you want to go all the way over to the right hand side and click on these uh, three, yeah, three lines and then merge channels. And it's important to note that you'll only be able to select the merged channels if you have more than one image open. So you do need all three images open to be able to do this. And we're going to select RGB color, which might sound counterintuitive because this is a, a show palette image, but RGB color is the one that we want. And what we're going to do now is we're going to select each of our images for its respective channel. And you can now see why it's important to give a useful name to your file because trying to select uh, an autosave one and two into the correct uh, channel um, is a bit more difficult than if you'd just given it a name. Um, so if you're not familiar with um, the show palette, then red is S2, green is H alpha, and blue is O3. And then once we hit OK, that has loaded an RGB image, which is fully aligned and ready for all of our post-processing curve stretches and things like that. And so from here, just to highlight why it was important to use a reference frame, if I just bear with me a second, I want to change this to a 16-bit image. Okay, and I'll just do a quick curves adjustment to highlight what I mean. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't normally stretch your data quite as bad as that. Ignore the colors. Um, that is a whole different video on show processing, uh, which I will cover in the future. But what you can see here down the right hand side is what we'd call a stacking artifact. And the easiest way to deal with that is obviously just to crop it out um, like so. And you could either, you know, bring it much further in or, or wherever you want it to, uh, to go. But the idea around using a reference frame is that you'll end up with a stacking artifact like that, which is easy to crop out. If you didn't use a reference frame, then Deep Sky Stacker will not quite align your images properly, even though that is exactly what it's designed to do. Um, and you'll end up with double stars and the images just aren't aligned and they look a bit odd. So it's just a good idea just to use a reference frame, just in case between capturing images, if the target has moved within the field of view slightly, then using that reference frame will mean that your final images can be stacked much easier and you can just crop this data off the side and you'll have a much easier time with post-processing. And that is the step that was really annoying me when I first started mono imaging. So I thought I would make this video just to explain the process. That is all for this video. I hope you found it useful. Please do share, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. My name is Nick and you've been watching Astra Exploring and I'll see you in the next one.